Oh, oh this, this is a scene. good scene. I love this scene because I got Zelfa to put a gag scene. on Scanda. Oh, no, okay. <laughs> Moxie, Moxie here. He t- every take, he would do it tighter and tighter. And it hurt so much. You can see it's like pulling back my face. No, the thing, oh. no, the thing is, um, the thing is, <laughs> you look so stupid. <laughs> it was actually, this was Scanda's mum's favourite scene because she didn't yes. have to wonder about keeping an eye on him. He was no, tied to one place, so she didn't have to keep control you of him. You cut this scene so much, you missed out the whole scrambling up and Anna nearly falling over and me actually falling over and Anna fumbling for the horn and... It's At, true. It's she's like actually blowing scene. the horn. And you cut the water fight as well. The water fight got a lot shorter. Yeah, no, I noticed that because I wasn't actually there, but I, I, I was hearing about, oh, you know, they had to do it for so long and then oh, it took like two this, seconds. This scene was uncomfortable because we were wearing like three different wetsuits. Oh my gosh, that first take, you said it was going to be I like this moment here practice. though coming up. Ha ha! That's Georgie's evil laugh, and you was real because she like splashed you in the face or something. Georgie and... definitely gave me more than I gave her. I <laughs> no. definitely. I know, but the first it. take, you said that it was a practice and you wouldn't splash me. But then, surprise, surprise. Susan, Andrew, doesn't Anna actually look into the camera just at that? Point? Did I? No. I think she did. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Too late now. <laughs> Well, just because the camera was right in front of her. Run, Peter, run! Save your sisters! Oh, We've already been through this. This is William acting to some tennis balls on poles. He's being circled by ferocious tennis balls. Oh, no, it didn't, um, wasn't Alan Poppleton in a green screen and in, in one of the outtakes, because he, he looked like a frog. And, and, and the line <laughs> is, you think you're a prince, but you'll die like a dog. And he goes, and then in that take, Alan Poppleton goes, you think you're a prince, but you'll be killed by a frog. <laughs> but um, I remember, like, um, Andrew was saying that I was meant to use some psych- psychology with the wolf. But it actually turns out that, you know, um, I don't know, I'm just, like, watching him, I suppose. I just kind of react. We did, actually, we added some lines in here while we were shooting that I didn't end up using. Yeah, I remember. That was, uh, that was you trying to kind of mess with the wolf's head. Yeah. And in the end, it, it did just become more about the intensity of the situation, and yeah. it actually made, made Peter seem too confident too quickly to yeah. do that. And I wanted him to grow, his confidence to grow a bit more slowly. Peter, clean your sword. Rise. Andrew, I noticed as well that you added the line, clean your sword, didn't you? And, the, Wait, and, so, the lo- and so the sword's like perfectly clean when I come yes, up. Yes, it's a line from the book, actually. Yeah, yeah no, I, yeah, I remember that. This is a nice moment. I think it's, it worked really well that you really were feeling the, pr- the pride and the weight at the same time, and the girls feel so happy for you. The Minotaurs will take the left flanks. We'll keep the giant in reserve and send the dwarfs in first. <laughs> There's this such a funny story that at the rap party, kind of Andrew was sort of. No, no, just wait, just wait for Kieran. It's <laughs> this how is I so funny. This I think we can talk. I think we can talk over top of this. People can watch Kieran if they want to. I know, yeah. I know, okay. but look at this hat when it falls down. It's so funny. Look, so funny. look. <laughs> now Anna can tell her story. Okay, Anna, go on. Um, there's this really funny thing, story that at the rap party, Andrew was sort of having a quiet word with everyone before we left New Zealand, and um. William was never quite word with me. You I did didn't. too. You did you just I went don't to remember each, it? I went to each of you. Just don't remember it exactly. Yeah, exactly for various reasons. Um, but then, um, you know, Georgie was sort of, kind of, yeah, I'm really sad. It's been wonderful. Goodbye. And then, you know, William was like, Judy, sort of emotional. And then um, Andrew said to Scanner, you know, Scanner, I'm really proud of you. And Scanner sort of took a moment to consider this, and then patted Andrew on the back and said, I'm proud of you too. <laughs> <laughs> Mr. Non-Emotion over there, I know. Will thanked me, Georgie tried not to cry, Anna gave me a big hug and scanned his kiss. Yeah, I'm proud of you. <laughs> <laughs> You've done a good job, Andrew. Yeah. Well, <laughs> he has, he has. He works a lot. You know, he was a oh, this well was done. a day of Doug in, in, in trousers and trainers. No, no, that was another day. That was a different day. Oh, 
but he arrived on set and, 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 and he normally and okay. remember he normally wore those like riding boots Douglas Gresham the stepson of C.S. Lewis wears the same sailor's <laughs> outfit every day and he's gonna kill me for saying this and, Sail- um, sailor so slash one day, so one day after you know day like 95 and every day we see him in the same thing he comes on with different shoes mm. And it happened to his to be his birthday, I think. And um, everyone yeah. was like, "Yeah!" Everyone, everyone was staring at him. I think we filmed it or something. It was so funny. Hello. Hello. <laughs> Are you all right? I'm a little tired. Just this moment here, this moment here, I wasn't sure what you're going to use because we did a lot of, vari- well, we did two variations. Right, one was yeah. one was where I'm mean to Skander and I'm like, get some sleep, you know. Um, and, and then I say, you know, and one more thing, Edmund. Try not to wander off. At, at one point I had the other version in there and um, I actually went backwards and forwards on this a long time before choosing this one. and. I still don't know which one was best, but uh, this one seemed like the right moment to see you actually forgive him or starting to forgive him. I like it that way. I think it feels like really good yeah. before the battle for them to have yeah, that. Yeah, that's what I ended up deciding. But it was a hard choice because the other one was actually a great moment too. To see you not completely forgive him was also... I mean, they were both really, really great performances and it was a hard choice. But it feels like a family... Fe- it feels more like a family effort, really. I remember this bit. When we were doing the audition for this... Um, Georgie reached across and grabbed Skander's hand, and Skander kind no, of looked no, it surprised. No, it wasn't Skander's, it was, it was, it was boy called Sebastian with ginger hair. Oh, it was hair. someone we were doing the workshop, yeah. And I remember thinking, wow, that was so incredible that she showed the initiative to do that. And I said, well, you know, where did you get the idea to do that? And she went, it's in the script. <laughs> <laughs> and I'd never noticed it was just in the, in the scene description in, this, in the script, and she had paid attention to it. This was definitely one of those scenes that we did quite a lot in the auditions. I mean, I, th- I remember this scene from very early on. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, it was. This scene was around for a long time. Same here. I, 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 only I, loved, I actually loved I doing loved this scene that. just because it was, again, a, a, a nice relief. Oh, and we were together and we were, like, you know, eating breakfast. No, no, this scene was the one scene I got to go horse riding, so everyone has to watch this. It was this so is the fun. one bit that I no, prove I can horse ride. Watch this. Oh, yes. That was oh, yes. new. Bullseye. That was new. That was new. It was. <laughs> Riding done, everyone. <laughs> Round of applause. That was amazing. Yeah, but what about up. my knife phone? Oh yeah, my Russian. It wasn't even you. Phone. That's cool, that bit. And this is the voice of our, uh, our line producer and, and producer yeah, Philip Stoyer. Stoyer. He's actually Just called saying, Philip. Who is actually called Philip? I, call I think Stoy, I think that's my favourite line in the movie. <laughs> my name is Philip. <laughs> I love how Azen's tail there just sort of flicks over and here. You know what I remember about shooting this scene? And that's the weather. Yeah. This is when we were shooting in Omaru and the weather was changing on an hourly basis. And you guys, you know, we had to decide which scene to do based on whether it was overcast or whether it was sunny. And you guys, in the one scene you had your, your English clothes and the other scene you had your Narnia clothes. And we'd basically look at the sky and we'd say, okay, it's going to be cloudy. Let's get them in their Narnia clothes. And they'd send you off for a costume change and it'd take an hour to change the costume. By the time you came back, the sun would be out again. But, okay, send them back for their English clothes. And yeah. it just went on and on that way for days. Look at the gorilla. He was so fun to I was with. I was never sure whether the gorilla actually made sense to be in the... Um, in like Aslan's camp, I just thought, why would there be a gorilla there? But then, you know, as it goes, it actually doesn't look that bad because well, because cool. when we were shooting, he was one of the few animals. But then when yeah. you see all of the animals, he fits in a bit more. Try and take him then. Do you really think that mere force will deny me my right, little king? Aslan knows that unless I have blood as the law demands, all of Narnia will be overturned and perish in fire and water. That boy 
Because it's the only scene that I had with... I think, was it the same for you? Well, the only scene that we had with Tilda. No, I had the battle. Oh, you had the battle. Well, for me, it was the only scene I had with Tilda. Yeah. And um, I was, you know, obviously I met her off set. She's really, really lovely. And um, But I, I was just so in awe of her in this scene. I mean, just because she's... She's very powerful. In so very, very powerful, powerful and yeah. so kind of really didn't have to act very much in this scene at all because she is so kind of awe-inspiring and so... Just striking. Tilda's um, Tilda just seems to draw this attention to her. I, don't know, I mean, like I mean, I'm not, you know, like when you watch her and she just is on this, on the screen, you know, and she comes into the ste- into the main, you know, area. You just can't help but just watching, you know. You really can't. She's and a very commanding presence. Really, yeah. really commanding. This was my only scene with Tilda as well, and um, yeah, I, I feel the same as Anna. The thing that I am really ang- the thing that I am really angry about about this scene. Another d- di- know, directorial. You thing cut out, you out two lines, which were Lucy's most ferocious lines. I enjoy saying them. I enjoy shouting because it's good at because it. it, 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 it oh no! Because I, 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 okay, I back enjoy to the shouting when I'm acting. That was cool. <laughs> 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 You know, this bit was so fun with all of the with all the guys. And, and look, what, this is an amazing thing because that looks like Skander actually enjoyed that hug. And that is called acting. And it looked like Skander <laughs> hugged Georgie, not Georgie hugging yes, Skander. I, I love this bit. I love this bit. I love this bit. Yeah, I do too, actually. This is one of my favourite bits where you actually have that change of emotion there and Asan catches your eye. And then this looks so real and so sad and then you have to kind of go back to pretending to celebrate and just pretend you never saw him. It's very effective. I think it's amazing with Aslan the way you've conveyed so much emotion, you know, behind him, and that must have been so difficult, you know, to actually really get that across. Yeah, well, again, we had a great, great team of animators on it, and Richie, who's the animation supervisor at, uh, at Rhythm and Hughes, I just think is incredibly talented, and you know, I have to give most of the credit to him because he really kind of got inside Aslan's head yeah. and really understood. Although I will say that scene of Aslan catching. Georgie's eye is one of the scenes we worked on the longest. Yeah. Just to kind of really get that sort of sudden change of emotion of being caught out, but still communicating what he was thinking. The thing is, it must be quite hard to get the emotions through because of, like... That's such, what Will just such, said. Such, such a, you know, no, 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 no. Because of, like, like in Ice Age, because of a huge mammoth, the trunk... Right. You know, they had to use only the eyes yeah. to project the animation, to project the emotion, sorry. And I think that that... Yeah, like you, like Will and you said, you know, that shows like true Well, bit. And actually one of the things with, with Aslan is, of course, that lions do have very expressive faces. That last shot of Aslan, by the way, is one of my favourite shots of him just walking, of favourite shots of Aslan, of just him walking on his own in the forest. That's it's actually so one of my favourite shots in the film as well. Just that, it, it actually made me feel so, so sad inside. Yeah. Like, And I was saying to, with Anna in the interviews that just that walk, that loneliness, you know, he's that absolute desolation. Weight, yeah. It's like... It's like you really empathise with them, and he's just something that's come off a computer. I remember you were really particular about this scene when we were filming it, because it's one of the last scenes we, we it was. shot so in we New Zealand. We shot this on the last day of shooting in New Zealand. Yeah, and um, I remember you saying that when you, I don't know whether this is wrong, that when you'd sort of done the script and read the book, that this was a really one that stuck, stuck out and was really important, especially yeah. to get, and because the thing is that you, you actually don't see that much of Aslan in the film. I mean, so much that you know about him is through everyone else's reactions to him. And so because this was this moment that actually you d- did meet Aslan, um, it was really important. Well, it was, it was particularly important because in a moment, you know, he's going, to, he's going to die and you needed to kind of get to know him. Don't tell them, Andrew. <laughs> don't tell them, Andrew. <laughs> <laughs> and you really needed to kind of, in the little time you've got to spend with him, you have to feel sympathy and empathy for him and you have to feel his vulnerability. And that to me was, this scene was about his most human moment because he was showing his vulnerability. He didn't want the girls to come with him. He didn't want them to see him die. At the same time, he couldn't say no because he needed them. Yeah. And I you think know, that vulnerability makes him more accessible. And again, like, I think he almost knows that, that, that they will follow, that, that they aren't just going to turn back and right. go back and, to and sleep. Something, yeah, I think when actually, we were yeah. discussing about Tilda and, um, and what makes her frightening and how sort of this inaccessibility and how you can't affect and, and she doesn't show her... She never really f- shows fear and, and anger and, and she's untouchable. And then you've got Aslan... Who's you know he's it's the opposite. This, yeah, yeah, he's this great regal, you know, majestic creature, but he's 
untouchable. One of the interesting things about us following Aslan is that it's actually in the, in the film it's kind of Susan who drags Lucy to yes. um, the stone table which is because we all had our own kind of individual character arcs um, in the film was really interesting yeah no I agree it's an interesting moment where Susan actually is the one that's more bold she's sort of really grown at that point I, I love the moment just before you jump into George, I love the moment where you where Lucy touches Aslan and the first time she reaches out and touches the main I always I always wanted that moment right from the beginning and when we started creating Aslan and, and figuring out how to do him CG and not use a real lion, it was because I wanted to get that moment where a little girl can reach out and comfort a lion. And interestingly enough, I mean, I, I think it works very well and yet that was again James, little James, yeah. wearing Aslan's mane and wearing a green suit and walking between you and the fact that you guys were able to pull off the emotion without actually even just cracking up. It's quite amazing. <laughs> he did look quite something in that blonde mane, didn't he? This bit I find horrible because when 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 you when you look when you look down there, you actually see a trickle of blood running down his forehead. No, you don't. Forehead. Oh, no, no, he's got no, a graze. Yeah, he's down got a down cut, here. Cut down on here. His head, yes. You actually see like a little tiny. Just, just see like the tiniest trickle on the side of his forehead. As a director, they're some of the, the most responsible you have, you know, to the reader and to the people that, that, that know the story. Like, you know, it must have taken a lot of thought to really try to convey all that vulnerability. And this was actually one of the first scenes we completed, actually, partly because we hadn't cast the voice of Aslan, and this is a lot of Aslan work and without dialogue. But also it was one of the most challenging sequences. But actually, I think one of the most challenging part was this part. Because I don't know how well you remember this, but we were shooting this oh, in, I in a cover <laughs> set, which was a tent at Flock Hill in like 60 mile an hour winds, trying to have this quiet moment, you know, emotional moment, while the wind is buffeting at the tent. And we were playing the Lion King. We were playing this. We had people to act out. We are doing everything possible to get Georgie into the emotional state working against the environment. He looks like a huge kitten and that what's that's one of the things that saddens me most about this about this scene is that when, without his mane and without his it, it's almost like his crown, isn't it? Yeah. And without his crown he almost he looks so vulnerable and, and common and and he just like looks like a huge kitten. And and in a minute when the knife actually goes in, you don't see the knife go in, but you see his eyes jerk open. George, when you were when you were watching this this bit of the film um, on Monday night, did you cry? Did you? Yeah, I was crying. She, was, <laughs> she, she cried when we did the looping, actually, which was interesting because yes, it was it was hard to get into the emotional state in the tent, and then when she we did the looping a few weeks ago, and I just played the scene, and Georgie just stood in front of the microphone, and she you were really crying, weren't you? It was really emotional. I do love the moment where where he catches Lucy's eyes. And you guys look into each other's eyes, and then suddenly you see that that he's sad and desperate. <laughs> I love Karen that. <laughs> that was so cute. <laughs> like a um, dance monkey. <laughs> this scene was also so huge for the prosthetics department, wasn't it? Oh my gosh! Yeah, and we were shooting at night, and it was freezing. Tilda was amazing because she she was out there keeping everyone entertained while we were shooting at two in the morning in Auckland, but in the freezing cold. In fact, the Minotaurs were happy here because they were the few people that actually were warm with their big woolly heads on. <laughs> But um, but guys were passing out, weren't they? Just because it was so. One guy did pass out. One of yeah. our monitors, just uh, I think, because it was just actually too hot for him. And these are big, like Maori, str you know. <laughs> I thought it was a goblin. Was it a goblin? No, I think it was one of the monitors. It was a girl goblin. I know oh, one of our female goblins went to sleep. <laughs> we ended the take and it was at the end here where everybody runs off which actually I didn't end up in, in the movie but we used to have a bit where everyone ran off the stone table and we were shooting and then there was a goblin that just started sitting on the rock and we realised she'd gone to sleep when I came to see this um, this set um, I just thought it was so dramatic you know with with the fire and the amount of extras you know and the and the intensity you know like everyone was so de dedicated the whole oh, time and, to it and didn't on one, on one time there's a KC was telling me there was a, um, a needle or a, a nail so it came out of somewhere and um, KC managed to see it right below because they're all stamping. 
and it went right below someone's foot as he lifted it up and then Casey shouted above all the noise like don't stamp and you had this guy this miner sort of like freeze thinking oh and uh, Casey ran in and grabbed the nail and <laughs> ran out Casey Hoddenfeld was our, uh, our AD and uh, he's so, yes. he's so very, funny very, observant. He's so good. very safety conscious it's too late he's gone 